in this video, I'm gonna look at all the sales of my prints from the last two or three years and see which print has sold the most and try and figure out why they've sold the most. But I'm also gonna be looking at how I price my prints, you know, how I think marketing your prints in a different way can help you sell them, and just everything to do with selling my prints, really. I hope you find it enjoyable. It's a little bit different than the usual videos I do, but I think it'll be good fun. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So prints is something that I've got a massive passion for. If I could, I'd just give everybody them for free. Obviously I wouldn't do that, that would be a really stupid idea, but um, I, I just like people to see my prints. And it's not just about my photos, it's anybody's photos. If you see your photo in print, it's one of the most exciting things. It just looks so much better than viewing it on the screen. And what I thought would be useful is to go back through my analytics, so I've done that, and I've figured out which prints have sold the most and tried to work out why that is. So I thought I'd start with the most sold print and I'll, I'll go through back from that um, and, until the, the ones that maybe don't sell as well, because I think they're the most interesting really, um, to try and find out why they haven't sold so well. Is it my marketing? Is it just it's a really crap photo? And I wanna talk to you a little bit more about how I price them, how I print them, how I package them, and, and just generally about prints. So before I do that, I thought it'd be interesting just to look at Instagram. So let's go in Instagram and see which are my most liked images over the last two years. So we can go into insights here, and I can go to posts, and look at last, two years, and then I can have a look at likes. And so this will give me an idea of the, the images that have been liked the most. These two here were sponsorship posts from the, the work I did for Google Pixel, so they probably don't count. Um, and so this, this image here, um, the top two images are actually ones from Madeira, which is really surprising. Um, but both of those are available as a print, so we can look at how they've done as a print. This is Prima, which is a recent image of mine as well that's done, done, done well now. I suppose more recent images might get more likes because I've got more follows. Um, there's quite a lot of woodland shots, which is quite interesting. And then, you know, keep going through this. You can see this is Enchanted Oaks, this is Sun Tree. This is a land that time forgot. Um, so some of those are, are some of my favorite images that got lots of likes. Pebbles done pretty well. Not got a print of pebbles. Maybe that's a good idea. It seems as though I, it's difficult to say why they've got the most likes um, because you know if I scroll right down, there's equally images like this Aurora shot that I thought would have got a fair number of likes but has got maybe almost half the likes of some of the other shots. So it's, it's, difficult, it's difficult to know, um, and I don't think there's any structure to Instagram apart from you've got to post a reasonably good photo to get good likes, but it's a little bit of luck whether you, you get a lot of likes or not, I think. So I just wanted to talk about that because I think it would be interesting just to see how many likes I get on Instagram compared with the number of prints that I've sold. So, um, so we'll just leave those down there. So, okay, so let's go to my most liked image. And there's a reason why I wanna show you this one first rather than, rather than the others. So this is um, a land where time forgot. And this one and the, and the next one I'm gonna show you got almost the same. I think this got just about 10% more. I don't wanna tell you how many prints that I, I sold. Um, there's still additions of these left, so you can probably get a rough idea that I didn't sell more than about 65 of, of each print. Um, but I, I don't, I don't wanna tell you the exact numbers. Um, so if you just, I'm just gonna base it on my most um, sold print and I'll do the percentages back from there. So this is my most sold print. And I think there's a, a similarity between this one 
and the next one which is um, Enchanted Oaks um, and I think the similarity is that they are both images that are just just a bit fairy tale I suppose that, that, that they're like not normality you know you, it's not n normal that you see you know woodland like enchanted oaks here or this amazing shot from Iceland at uh, Vesterhorn they're also quite um, duotone images as well so this is orange and black that's green um, and, and black so I think there's something very enchanted about this and, I, and, and that's what I want to get onto when you come into selling prints and I think there's two types of prints that sell really well and I'll come on to that in a little bit but let's go through some more of the images so the, the next sold print after these so these roughly sold the same um, the um, land that time forgot sold just a little bit more than enchanted oaks so the, the next one is sun tree so this is sun tree and this has been for sale for the longest time so there's a good chance that that's why but it's still quite similar to the, the other two it's about a 70 percent of um a land where time forgot and again this is pretty mysterious it's pretty special i think on to my next one which is pretty random um and it is this one which is um um, morning sun, sunrise Tiburon so nothing particularly spectacular about this apart from um, it is a fairly unique angle from the Golden Gate Bridge um, but I want to I want to explain later why this sold so much um, and it's to do with marketing not to do with the image it's purely down to marketing not 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 the actual image although I really like the image um, so then, so that sold um, similar to Suntry as well. So then we're dropping down to about 40%, 30, 40% of a Langware Time Forgot, so quite a significant amount less. And that is this image here, um, which is just a fantastic image from uh, the, L L the Langdales um, and the River Brathe on this beautiful sort of autumn frosty morning. It's seen a bit of... Um, this is my test print. It's in a bit of action, this print. I've, I've, I've shown it to a lot of people, so it's got a couple of marks on. It's one thing with this um, type of paper, you've just got to be careful with it. Once it's framed, it lasts for 100 years, but it does mark easily, so you've got to be careful. So this one, and probably about another four or five images have sold about the same. So they've done been good sellers, but nothing like as good, probably a third uh, or, or, or maybe yeah about a third as good as a land where time forgot and that's this image here um, from sky of this tiny little house which is a good seller this sells well big believe it or not so people like this really big because I think it probably is quite dramatic but it's not got quite so much that fairy tale look it probably maybe somebody's gone to sky wants to get uh, you know maybe they didn't get an image they went to Elgol and they, they want something to remember it by this is very much Scotland so I, I presume that people that buy this it predominantly goes to the US maybe want to have, have um, a taste of Scotland um, and then this one uh, again is has done really well again I, I wouldn't say this is a much of a fairy tale image image so much from the Faroe Islands it's a really nice image I think it looks really good big again um, and people tend to buy it quite big uh, again it's similar with this one so these are what I call my sort of average sellers you know the good quality portfolio shots I really really like them but they haven't got sort of that fairy tale look of a land where time forgot or enchanted oaks now there's some more recent ones so I'll just get onto these and um, before we talk about them in a bit more detail so there's some more recent ones that I do think have a more fairy tale look and I'll just show you one of them which is this one here yes so so the Fennell um, family again is something just a bit special and, and this has started to sell really well um, now obviously it hasn't sold as many as the others because it's not been for a sale for as long but it has sold well now the um, the bigger versions of this again have sold quite well so the A2 and the A1 and um, and yeah, that's that's good. I, I've got to admit, I make more profit from those. And I'll talk about pricing in a minute because I think that's important. Um, 
but they're also limited in edition as well. So somebody buying them maybe thinks they're more special. So that has done really well. It's, it, this is one of my favorite photos. Actually, the more I look at this, the more I like it as well. So yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic shot. There's a few shots that I, that I thought would sell really well, but haven't sold really well. Now, this is a new one. Um, I haven't sold many copies of this. I think just, just two, I think, which I thought I'd sell more of it. Um, it just surprised me because I really, really like this. And I just, I just wonder whether it's just, um, it seems as though shots that with really strong foreground, for some reason, don't sell very well. This one and this one actually um, are such shots. So this one hasn't sold very well either. And it's been for sale for two, three years now. But I think I put this um, up for sale when I put a land where time forgot. Um, and I think if somebody's looking at an Iceland shot from Vesterhorn, then they'll probably choose that one. And I think that's probably why this didn't sell very well. But this one here um, from Iceland, again, I thought it'd be a really simplistic shot. I love it. I, I love the, the, you know, the, 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 the structure of the hut here and the textures and with the background image. This did really well on Instagram as well. I didn't think, I don't think I showed it, but it did really well on Instagram in a slightly different crop. Um, so uh, again, it was a bit of a surprise this because I, I thought this would sell well, um, but maybe because it's just a building and I'm a landscape photographer, maybe that was it. Um, this image didn't sell well, um, which surprised me again. I think I've sold one copy of it. <laughs> but this is one of my most liked Instagram photos. It's like in the top 15, I think. So I just don't quite get that. Um, uh, and then I just want to show you one more, which was this one here. And this is a shot that has has done has done well. Um, um, that I just that again I think is a little bit like uh, the the Fennell family. Uh, I think it's a little bit more mysterious. It's a little bit special, and this does have a good big foreground. So that sort of might defeat my foreground idea. So I think there's there's two types of images that sell well. Um, and they are the types of images that something super special, a little bit different, it's a little bit mysterious, fantasy-like, and people think that is a bit out of this world. And, you know, like a Land Where Time Forgot, um, Enchanted Oaks. Then there's the shots that I think are locations that people want to remember. Um, and they might not be the most enchanting shots, but they're They've got to be good landscape for, for photo shops. So like this is one, this does reasonably well. So, um, which is probably, somebody's probably been there and um, maybe they didn't get quite the shot that, that they, they wanted. And, and this is, a, a, I think, a pretty good representation of that location. Um, and those types of shops just are, are just regular sellers really they don't sell fantastically well but they send, sell reasonably well and they tend to those shots tend to sell in bigger bigger versions as well really well i don't understand why but they do okay a little bit more information about selling prints and how i come up with the pricing what images i choose to, to print and um, just generally how I market them as well. Now, I suppose I'm a little bit unique in that I've got this audience, you know, I've got YouTube, and not every landscape photographer is gonna have a YouTube channel, um, but there's Instagram, there's your website, and you can also do some other marketing things that I'll tell you at the end that should be really, really useful no matter what audience size that you have. So the first thing I want to say is, it's really, really important to build um, some sort of um, audience, and that might be a really small audience, it might be a local audience, but it's really good to be able to have a small audience that, that looks at your work on a regular basis. Because if you can sell a few prints, then there's a really good chance that you're gonna sell more prints to those people. What I find is that 50% of my sales now come from existing customers, that people have bought a print. Because if you think about it, you know, a print's a very tactile thing. You know, when you see it, you see the texture of the paper, you see, you know, just all the subtle details that you might not see um, on on an image on screen. Not everybody can have a e exhibition, which is probably the best way of selling your prints. Um, so it, in that way, as soon as somebody buys a print, they see it, and then they see another image, then they're more likely to buy another image. So it's good to have 
you know, customer base and then you can get re re repeat sales, which means that it's really important in terms of packaging as well, which I'll, I'll talk about. So then the next thing is about additions and how do you come up with additions and sizes and things. And there's so many different ways of doing this. There's so many different ways of coming up with pricing. For me, the way I've done it is um, I have put my prices up over, over time. Uh, that's for numerous reasons. I feel that my time is a little bit more valuable now. Um, I've got to decide on where I'm going to spend that time. Um, it, I, I spend quite a lot of time going to locations and I don't get a, a huge amount of shots from those locations. So I've got to factor that into the price of a print. Um, and then I, I put a value on addition numbers as well. So if there's a low addition number, then that print's gonna be more expensive. Because I think that if somebody's collecting this, they're collecting art, and if they know that there's only an addition of five, then they're more likely to be excited about having one of those and be willing to pay a little bit more money. Um, so I have A3 size, which is an addition of 50. I have A2 size, which is an addition of 10. And I have an A1 size, which is an addition of five. And they range in price from 195 to 345 to 495 pounds, which seems expensive, but you know, people do sell their prints for thousands of pounds um, and up to hundreds of thousands of pounds. And it's really difficult art because I, I've seen people that have got amazing images, amazing prints, sell them for thirty pounds. Um, so you've just got to price them what's comfortable for you. I think. I think what's really important though is is trying to get the viewer to um, buy into that image. So the story, the title is really important. Again, I've got this massive benefit of YouTube. Um, Enchanted Oaks and A Land Where Time Forgot are two images that I did a YouTube video about. Uh, it was really exciting. And then people buy into that and, and they, they want a piece of that. And But there's nothing to stop you doing that on your website. You can write a blog about it. You can write a really good description, a really good title. How you present it on your website is so, so important. Because if you don't present it well, then people aren't going to think that that image is going to come in the post in, in, in well presented either or be well printed. Showing the process of how you're making those. There's a guy on Instagram that I follow called Jack Lodge. Check him out. I'll put a link in the, the description below. And he started printing his photos this year and he's just done such an amazing job of marketing that um, on Instagram. And I think that just um, the viewer invests in that because they feel that they've gone along with the journey of producing those images. You know, I, 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 I'm really excited about what he's done. Um, and it becomes not so much about the image itself, but the process of taking that image, producing that image, and, and making it into a work of art that somebody might want to buy. Think about that because it's really, really important. And then the packaging, everything that goes into that is really important. I've thought so long and hard about that, you know, about my certificates of authenticity that have got a stamp on them, about, you know, just how I'm going to ship the A3 prints and the A2 prints and the A1 prints. I've got custom made tubes specifically for them, for the bigger prints so they don't get damaged in the posts. Um, I've got thicker walls and a wider diameter. All those things just really, really matter um, because then when somebody gets it and it's in a really good condition, then they're more likely to buy it again. So the other thing that I wanted to speak about was how else you can market your, your prints. So the one that I spoke about before, which was Morning Fog Tiburon, I'll just grab it, which is a really good seller of mine. And it's this one here. It is an image that I took when I lived in um, San Francisco. And then what I decided um, when I came back is, and started doing this as a full-time job, was wouldn't it be interesting, all these people in, in, this ha in these houses here, if I could market this print to them, because they might be interested in this, they're in the, in the actual image and it's probably a, a, a view of theirs. Um, so I used Facebook and I um, selected the people in that area and I said, um, anybody that's on Facebook in that area, can you promote this print to? So I sold about 25 copies of this by doing that and I invested a little bit of money in that ad. I think it cost me about 50 pounds, the ad, but it paid off. Um, you know, if I had just sold one, it paid off. And then what was also really exciting is that those people were, sent me messages about how, how much they liked it and how it was very different than they'd seen before. Um, so 
you know, you could do that. You could maybe go onto message boards, local message boards, get the get the word out about what you're doing. If you're taking images locally, which you've probably done loads <laughs> over the last year being local, and you've got some good ones, just try and get them out, and I guarantee you'll be able to sell them. Obviously, they've got to be good quality. You've got to print them well, you've got to present them well, and you've got to send them well, but I'm sure you'll be successful. Anyway, I hope that's been of interest. I hope you've found that useful. Um, I, I, it was a little bit of a last minute video this. I was gonna do something else, but I was at the printers printing my book this morning and I just thought it'd be really interesting this. I think people might find it interesting. They might um, just get something a little bit different out of it. Um, let me know in the comments, what did you think of this? Do you want me to do more things like this about my process? Obviously, I'm going to do much more in the field when we come out of lockdown. Um, but when I'm back here in my studio, it's always good to have do different things, I think. Anyway, thanks ever so much for watching. And until next Sunday, bye. We can stay up